Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and we'd like to start a Bible study for Bible-Christian.org. And today we will be in 1 Thessalonians and chapter 2. So hopefully you'll have your Bible and follow along with us, or either just follow uh, where we're showing you the verses, and hopefully... You will also think about the Old Testament passages that you're supposed to be reading if you're reading through the Bible in a year. And don't think, oh, well, I didn't start at the first of the year, so I have to start then. No, you start on today's date, and then a year from now, you'll have read the Bible through completely. Now, if you need to print out the Bible reading that we're doing, you can go to our website and uh, print in or go to the search engine. And one thing you could put in, uh, start on today's date or reading the Bible in a year. Okay, so and that would come up and you could print out the Bible reading that we do each day here on the Bible study. Uh, so I've used this method for quite a few years. And we can also uh, show you, so you should be in the 20, uh, Deuteronomy 27 today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and Proverbs 27. And if you're reading that, now again, I would share that if you have not used the Bible app yet, Please, people, it's not that hard at all. You go on to your app store or the place that you put on the apps on your cell phone, and then you would look for Gideon uh, Bible app. That's free Gideon's Bible app, and you will find that. Or you could go to the Blue Letter Bible app, and there you will be able to access those. Those are dramatized versions of the Bible in many cases. In the Gideon Bible app, it will be in your language. Uh, there's 1,500 languages plus on there right now. And so you can go there. And I love listening to uh, especially the Old Testament and even the New Testament on the dramatized versions of the Bible. So let me encourage you to do that if you haven't yet. And uh, if you have friends or relatives, maybe in India or Africa, that never learned to read or write, or some other country, they have it in audio for them. You see how God is being these things up. In days gone by, you had to learn how to read, you know, in order to read the Bible. But now it's audio. And so please take advantage of this. Tell other people about it. Uh, get uh, people on. Uh, for example, the Gideon Bible app, go to uh, the country and uh, then look up the language that they have for them. Show them this is in your language and let them listen to it in their own language. And so let me encourage you to do that. Please, people, use all the things, the tools that God is giving us today to get the gospel out. All right, we're in chapter 2 of Thessalonians. And... Uh, Remember yesterday we looked at Acts chapter 16 where Paul was, uh, Paul went to uh, where the Thessalonians were and uh, area of Macedonia that he was forbidden by the Holy Spirit uh, to go a couple different places at that time uh, to uh, go east or to go um further west, I suppose, uh, but he was forbidden by the Holy Spirit at that time because he was praying and saying, Lord, where do you want us to go next? And then in the night, the Lord woke him up and showed him a vision. It wasn't a dream, but a vision of a man from Macedonia saying, come over to us. And uh, they, of course, wanted to hear the gospel. And so Paul, okay, the Holy Spirit is showing us that's where we need to go. You know, we need to know the Holy Spirit so well in our lives that he 
as he's speaking to us. It's a still, soft voice. And uh, sometimes us men, I'll be honest with you, we have to be, it's like somebody has to take a two before and hit us over the head before we <laughs> will listen to things like that. But remember Elijah, he was in the cave and uh, ru running from Jezebel. He had already killed, uh, the Lord had killed through him uh, 450, and it might have been even double that because a lot of times we leave out that other part to those that had were uh, Baal worshipers. And, um, Mount Carmel, and you can see, I've been there, you can see that from all uh, from long distance, see what would have taken place there. And the Lord uh, gave him the courage to stand up to the king. Uh, but when it came to Jezebel, he was afraid of her. She was a demon worshiper and an idol worshiper. And he ran and hid in a cave. But then God was going to show him how he speaks to him and to listen. And uh, so he showed him the earthquake. No, God wasn't there. He showed him the wind. The Lord wasn't in that mighty wind and so on. And then he spoke to him in a still, soft voice and told him what he wanted him to do. That's how God speaks to us, men and women of God. He speaks by his Holy Spirit to us when we get into his word, when we want his direction. He says, if you lack wisdom, ask me and I will give you wisdom. That's in James. All right, so let's get into the passage here and realize the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and guiding us and directing us if we will only listen. <coughs> As Paul found out. Okay, as well. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. So it was what God intended. It was God's perfect will. But even after we had suffered before, remember, uh, before that, uh, he was in Philippi and there were beaten with rods because they had cast a demon out of this uh, girl and she received the Lord and and then, well, and then uh, they were put in jail and put into uh, the Philippian uh, jail there in Philippi and put in stocks, but they were praying. And the Lord did a mighty miracle. And that is in Acts chapter 16 also. And there uh, the there was an earthquake and all the prisoners were let go and the chains fell off of their hands and so on, and their feet, the stocks, and they were up walking around. And remember the the jailer could not believe they were all there. Or at first, he was thinking that they had escaped. And so remember, that's what happened in Acts chapter 16, right before this uh, book is written, right before Paul is, uh, was able to go to Macedonia and uh, with the vision that he saw. But then when he was in jail there, uh, the Lord uh, was helping them to sing praises to God. Do we sing praises to God when things are not going well? Well, Paul did, and Silas, and it meant the salvation of the jailer, <laughs> and uh, they had jailer there, and so they, uh, he was going to commit suicide and fall on his sword, but Paul said, no, don't do that, we're all here, and then uh, he said, what must I do to be saved? That tells you that Paul had already talking, uh, spoken to him, and uh, Silas, and uh, then also uh, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your household. So he did. And that very night he was saved and baptized and so on. So uh, this is what had happened uh, there in um, Philippi. And then he sent right away to Macedonia. 
and to this is uh, the Thessalonians are there in that area of Macedonia. So he said, it wasn't in vain that we went to you. Uh, there was a reason the Lord sent us there. there God always has a reason. Um, and he says, even after we had been, uh, we suffered before in Philippi, remember, treated at, uh, spitefully treated at Philippi, he even told the government, he said that the Roman government, you, you whipped us with a, Without even you beat us without even a trial, they can do that. He said, "No, come and apologize to us." <clears throat> so spitefully uh, treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. So even after they were suffering from. Uh, that uh, beating that they'd gotten and, and being in jail and so on. And then they come to Macedonia to share the gospel with them. Hello, Esther. Good morning to you too. Uh, the Lord bless you guys. Uh, verse three, for our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanness, nor was it in deceit. God sent them specifically there to share the gospel with those in Macedonia and uh, the Thessalonians. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. So he has the right motive for sharing the gospel. We have been entrusted with the gospel. And I will tell you, there's two main different views as far as uh, the gospel and salvation. There is the reform view, uh, the hyper-Calvinist view that says that Everyone's going to get saved. It's going to get saved. In some senses, they they wouldn't come right out and say probably necessarily. Well, they do sometimes that they the Lord doesn't need you to lead people, Lord. If you don't, then somebody else will. That's kind of a view that uh, is held by the reform movement, uh, and in fact, uh, William Taylor, as I remember it. Uh, he was called to go to uh, India, uh, as I'm thinking there. And uh, one time he was in front of the church board, the elders, and and he was telling them that the Lord had called him to go to uh, the country of India. And uh, he was sharing that, and they said, Sit down, young man, sit down. If God wants to save the people in India, he'll do that. Well, that's the extreme view there. And my dad, when uh, somebody, even though he was a Calvinist and a Baptist and uh, believed uh, in this uh, almost uh, a lot of things, but then when it came to salvation, uh, he would share with people, well, John 3.16 is still in the book. Well, and that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so there is the other side that says that people have a free will. And that's the side that we're on. That you have a free will to share the gospel with people. And it will mean the difference between life and death for many people. And it is so important that Paul said when he was leaving after he had finished ministering in different places, he said, I am free from the blood of all men. What was he talking about? He was talking about Ezekiel, where it said that we're watchmen. The watchman has to watch and warn people if there's something to be warned about and to warn them that they need to go to heaven and they need to turn from their sins to be saved, to repent. 
over and over again, all the New Testament, people starting with John the Baptist, spoke about repentance. Jesus spoke about repentance, turning from your sin to receive Christ as Savior. Paul spoke about repentance. And on and on it goes. And some people today in the Calvinistic uh, extreme view says, oh, there's no re need for repentance. That was just in the early churches. No, that is not true either. We need to repent, turn from our sin. That's what that word means, and turn to Christ. And so uh, there, uh, Paul said, I'm free from the blood of all men. Are you free from the blood of all men? Are there times that God has spoken to you about going to speak to somebody and you didn't do it? Well, then you can't say that you're free from the blood of all men. And you need to go to the Ezekiel chapter 3 passage and read it where it talks about how, how that we are held accountable for the blood of people and they need to hear the gospel. What do you think? The gospel has not gone into all the world and Jesus gave us that command. And all at the end of the Gospels, he gave us the command to go into all the world and preach the Gospel, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if we don't do that, we are not fulfilling the Great Commission. And the Gospel of Coca-Cola has gone into all the world. Avon has gone into all the world. Uh, except, you know what? The gospel, the name of Jesus, the most important thing has not gone into all the world. The gospel has not gone into all the world. We need to share the gospel with others and get that message out. And that is so important. Important. We will be held accountable for the responsibility of getting the gospel out. Are you doing that? Okay, verse 5. So, God has entrusted us, in verse 4, with the gospel, and even so we speak, not pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. We're not just, uh, well, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to offend anybody. Verse 5, for neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for covetousness. God is witness. Okay, they did it for the right motive. They got the gospel out. They didn't use flattering words. I've got to say something about that today. Some people today in churches, they call themselves Christian churches. Oh, don't, don't talk about sin. Uh, oh, no, 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 that will offend people. Don't talk about the cross. That will offend people. And uh, Billy Graham, early on in his ministry, he was in England, and a uh, taxi cab driver was taking him back and forth to the meeting, so he would visit with him and so on. He said, how did you like the meeting tonight? He said, well, well pretty good, I guess, but you know what? You never spoke once about the cross of Christ. And Billy Graham realized he hadn't, and he determined from that day forward to always speak in all of his messages about the cross of Christ. <clears throat> and you know, the cross is offensive. You can speak about God, but once you start speaking about Jesus or the cross, it offends people. Well, you know what? Either they'll turn from their sin to Christ, or either they will reject Christ. And we need to share the whole gospel with people. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for covetousness, because you wanted money uh, from the sharing the gospel. No, God is a witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. They could have commanded you, the people, to give to them for their ministries because they're apostles, but they didn't do that. They trusted the Lord for the money that they needed to serve and, and do the things they needed to do. But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes, cherishes 
her own children. Jerry says, okay, that's kind of a hard word to say. Never thought about that before. But the thing is that nursing mother, uh, she's nursing her child, all tender. She's holding the baby very carefully. She doesn't want to injure the child in any way. She's showing love to the child. That's the way Paul, as he shared with new Christians and the ministry and the church, he was doing it in a loving way. Manasseh, good to see that you're on too. The Lord bless you, brother. All right, now we're in verses, uh, verse 8 right now of chapter 2, okay, of Thessalonians. So, verse 8, so affectionately longing for you. That's the way ministers should show love to those, the sheep that God has given them in the fold. We were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because we had become dear, because you had become dear to us. When we're reaching people in the gospel, we lead them to the Lord. They're brothers and sisters in Christ. They're new babes in Christ. They're new babies. They need to grow. And, uh, and so we love them and cherish them and help them. Verse 9, we're going to look at now. <clears throat> For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil. For laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. So, Paul was a tent maker. He used his uh, ability to, uh, his craft that he had, his skill that God had given him to make tents where he was. Many pastors today, they serve the Lord by working and another job to pay for the ministry so that they don't burden people. Uh, I personally believe that is the way, and that's what the Lord has done for us many years, as uh, we've worked and served the Lord, and now we're retired and on Social Security too, but the thing is that we have tried to work in the ministry and to support ourselves. And so many pastors do that, and that's, uh, you maybe think, well, I can't go in the ministry because I don't have any money. And no, you just keep working and the Lord will give you a chance to teach the word and share the word. And that's the way they did it. They didn't burden the people, they said. They worked night and day and then they earned their own money so they could share the gospel there with them. You are witnesses and God also how devotedly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you <clears throat> who believe, as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. So uh, after they led them to the Lord, it's a challenge to see them grow up in the Lord uh, and to become strong, mature Christians. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. His praise for him all the time, thanking God. Oh God, thank you for the Thessalonians uh, and those that received you there. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is. In truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. You see, before the Bible was written down, Paul was sharing the word of God. Some of these things that he's saying now, some of the things that he said and preaching and teaching in other places. <clears throat> and then he wrote these things down. It was the word of God. When we're sharing, we're to be sharing the word of God with people, not our opinions, not what we think, but what does the word of God say? That's what we're to be sharing. <clears throat> and then we won't go wrong. 
and it works effectively in people's lives. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God, which are in Judea, in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, just as they did from the Judeans, who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they do not please God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved, so as always to fill up the measure of their sins. But wrath has come upon them to the utmost. Now we need to talk about that. The Jewish people, remember the Jewish leaders, uh, 68 on the Sanhedrin uh, would not believe that Jesus was the Messiah and had him crucified. Of course, God allowed the crucifixion. Crucifixion takes place because he was dying for our sins. But even after the crucifixion, they did not receive him. Only Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus received him. The rest persecuted the Christians. They had uh, Stephen stoned. Paul was there when that took place. They... Uh, that were glad when the king killed James, one of the apostles, <coughs> disciples of Jesus, and the others that were persecuted. And Paul was part of that persecution, remember? Uh, going different places. He was going to go to Damascus, even to find Christians to kill them. And that's the way the Jewish people were. Now, there were many of uh, the priests that were saved but the leaders of Israel. They kept people from hearing the gospel. And they were, they are under the judgment of God to this day. They were scattered into the world, into the world. Now they're coming back, but they're coming back in unbelief to this point. Later they will receive Jesus as the Messiah. But I believe in many of the things that have happened around the world is because they said when Jesus was being uh, crucified, when they were standing before Pilate, he, uh, when he said, this is your king, why would you want him crucified and so on? And he's the king of the Jews. And they would say, they said, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Now, that doesn't mean we agree with those that say that um, Jews are Jesus, Jesus murderers. Jesus, uh, Jews are Jesus haters, uh, which they do not like Jesus at this point as a nation. And, but there are many Jews that are receiving the Lord. But uh, there are many others that persecute those that want to hear the gospel. They keep them from hearing the gospel. And that has happened through the years to this day in Israel even. And it's against the law really to go out on the streets and share the gospel. And I've been there, I know. Okay, but also he's telling the, 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 uh, the Macedonians, you know, you've done the same, uh, you've faced the same thing that we as Jews have faced. That there are people for your own brethren that don't want you to hear the gospel. And they've kept you, uh, they own, your own countrymen, kept you from hearing the gospel and didn't want you to do that. And he said, but you didn't let that stop you uh, because wrath has come upon those who don't want to receive the message of the Jews and of the Gentiles. But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time, so now uh, he was there, but now they're... Uh, separated. He's sharing the message uh, of through letter to them in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. He wants to go back to visit there. And I would love to go back to Kenya. I'd love to go to Indian, India and places to share the gospel still. But therefore, we wanted to come to you even I, Paul, time and time again, 
Uh, but Satan hindered us. Okay, so he wanted to go there, but he wasn't allowed to go. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. What is the, our glory and joy is knowing that we'll meet you, uh, those that receive the Lord in heaven uh, one day. And so we, we that is what will make us excited when we go to heaven uh, to not only see Jesus, that would be wonderful and the most wonderful thing, but then to see those that we've led to the Lord. Well, our time is up. Okay, so let's go to uh, God in prayer this time. Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you'll bless it as it goes forth. We pray all these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. We'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.